In the Institute of Neuroscience here at Newcastle University, we've been exploring emotional states in a wide range of different species. In this issue of Current Biology, we report some recent research suggesting that even honeybees might show components of human emotional states. The inspiration for these experiments came from observations made by psychologists of how humans behave when they're anxious or depressed. We know that anxious and depressed people tend to see the world in a more pessimistic light. We already have really good evidence from vertebrate animals such as rats, dogs and even birds that animals that are in a bad state show more pessimistic decision making. So we thought it would be really interesting to see whether an invertebrate animal, in this case the honeybee, which is not normally regarded as having emotions like, like vertebrates or humans, and would also show pessimistic biases in its decisions when it's stressed or anxious. So at the beginning of the experiments, we went to the roof of the building and we collected bees from an outdoor colony. Um, individual bees were placed in glass vials and then returned to the lab where they were um, cooled and then placed in little harnesses for training later. We trained them 24 hours after we had collected them. Um, and during the training procedure, we trained them to learn that one odor was associated with a sucrose reward, whereas another odor was associated with quinine punishment. And during this protocol, essentially the bee learns that an odor is a signal she will be fed, and so she extends her mouth parts to feed. Um, likewise, she she learns that the other odor is a signal that she will be punished with something bitter, and so she retracts her mouth parts. So after the bees had, had been trained in this task so that they had learned these two odors very well, we then separated them into two groups. We separated them. One group was a control group um, that was not subjected to any other treatment. They were just placed on the bench. And another group um, that had just been trained with the, those same bees was then subjected to very vigorous shaking for one minute. After the bees had been shaken, we then took both groups back to the training station and we tested them for their opinion of what these odors predicted. So we tested them with the odor they were trained with in association with sucrose, and we also tested them with the odor that was trained in association with the bitter compound. Likewise, we trained them with three unfamiliar odors that they had never seen, and we asked, do these odors predict sucrose or do they predict quinine? Interestingly, what we found was that the bees that had been shaken were much more likely to respond to these odors as if they predicted punishment with the quinine. And thus we have shown that the bees exhibit a pessimistic cognitive bias or a negative outlook on life um, as a result of a very stressful event. Uh, this is a really astounding thing. Um, what we haven't shown, however, is that bees experience sub the subjective components of emotion. And uh, that's something that will be impossible for us to, as scientific researchers to ever identify in an animal. Animals cannot speak and they f therefore cannot tell us how they feel. What our experiments do allow us to say is that there are common hallmarks of negative emotion that run across species and pessimism seems to be a very good way of identifying negative emotional states um, in anything from humans to dogs to, to the honeybee. Negative emotions may have evolved in animals in order to protect us from threats. Uh, for example, in our bees, uh, we believe that the bees thought that the shaking event was like a predatory attack on their hive, like a honey badger essentially attacking the hive. And so this shows that in, in humans as well as in insects that emotions or a pessimistic outlook um, may be a potential way of adapting to attack from predators. In showing this kind of pessimistic decision making in bees, we've shown that in invertebrates we see exactly the same hallmark of negative emotions that we see in humans and in other vertebrates that are thought to be in negative emotional states. So this is quite cool because we can potentially use this negative decision making as a marker of, of negative emotions across a wide range of species.